Hi. In this video, I will be working on my Passat V6. This is a 2007 uh, 3.2 V6. Would be the same in the entire V6 range. I'd expect uh, the process to be similar in the Mark V Golf, in the 1T Turan, uh, and the early uh, Tiguan. Um, if we if you're watching this, uh, it must mean that you're you're hoping to change your steering wheel or to um, move the multifunction steering wheel components into a standard wheel. So what I am uh, hoping to achieve here is to uh, replace my multifunction um, steering wheel uh, with uh, with a steering wheel out of a Mark V GTI Golf. So that's uh, I've got it in the boot. So this is uh, this is the nicest steering wheel. It's got the perforated uh, perforated bits on the side. It's got the flat bottom, and it's in slightly better condition uh, than the one in the car. However, it's not multi-function. They're both uh, pedal pedal shift uh, enabled uh, steering wheels, but they um, this one's not multi-function. And the purpose of my video is not just uh, to demonstrate how to replace the steering wheel, but to also explain how uh, we'd retrofit the um, multifunction components into this um, standard or near standard steering wheel. So just to uh, move on, this, the parts that uh, the tools that we'll need for this project: uh, flex uh, size ten. A uh, 10 millimeter spanner, uh, a flat screwdriver, um, T20 um, Torx bit, uh, an M12 uh, spline bit, uh, and a driver. So I'm going to have uh, a 3 8 driver for the T20, and I've got this 12, uh, sort of this half inch uh, strong bar to open up the steering wheel, and I've got the half inch. Um, ratchet and some extensions just in case uh, so moving on the important thing to remember here is that if you want to uh, keep your car error free uh, you'd disconnect the, the battery before you get started however you want to loosen up the airbag uh, before disconnecting the steering wheel um, because uh, it'll be very difficult to turn the steering wheel with the battery disconnected so uh, yeah let's get started for the first part we're gonna need the T20 um, we're gonna need the flat screwdriver and we're going to need the 3 8 uh, driver we'll come back to the, the rest of it in a short bit um, at the back of the steering wheel you'll notice these two holes the airbag clips into them and you end up getting just just across here you end up getting a a thin wire clip so it, it springs in and clips over this over this tab on each side and what we're effectively doing here is we want to get our steering our screwdriver in at the outside push that clip inward and loosen each side of the steering wheel so to get started we would put the screwdriver in push the clip aside and almost grip the airbag from the front so that it doesn't clip back in while we undo the other side uh, so let's get started with that in the b6 passat we've got um we've got this cover around the ignition or where the ignition would normally be um, that needs to be removed in order for us to get access to those clips mm -hmm. to release the airbag um, so to explain that I'm going to get my key in there I've now turned the steering wheel in such a way that that hole would come up here to the top and I'll do what I can to demonstrate that you almost see that it's pretty tough to get at the hole at the, 
bottom here we've got a T20 uh, bolt or screw holding in the panel so that screws in all the way through and holds in the top holds in the top part we the, the top part is the one we want to get out um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get started at removing that I let the car run for a little bit just until I'm done with this it makes turning the steering wheel a little bit easier just a few turns we've got that out to the next part you want to pull down the release lever for the steering column move the steering wheel downward and all the way out and you could put that back firmly into place I'm just gonna get in there You then want to put your hand at the back here and free up this top panel. The first time you do it, it's going to be a little bit difficult. If it doesn't move, loosen that lever again and pull downward. And you see that there's a almost semicircular clip here that hooks onto a, a circular tab on the inside, on either side. And you want to pull on at the front. You want to try to separate these panels. Give it a gently pull upward and out. To give you an idea here, we've got this tab on the right side and we've got one on the left side that slot into slot into those yellow bits, um, yellow catches on the top. So you want to very gently free that. There's nothing else that holds it in place. Those are the circular tabs on either side that hold on to the semicircular clips at the on the bottom cover. All we really need to do is we need to loosen this top cover. Now that it's free, I'm going to hold it aside and I'm going to lock my steering wheel in place. So, like I said earlier on, we want to get the screwdriver in place. I get my screwdriver in at the very outside. My car is still running. My battery is still in there. And I move that clip downward and here at the front, yank at the airbag. Yeah, that's not going to work out very easy. Um, Perhaps what I want to do is free that again and not pull the steering wheel all the way, the airbag all the way out. Oops. Okay, so that's free. I'm not going to yank at it because I don't want the horn to blare again. And I'm going to free up the left side. Now, same principle. Very difficult to get the camera in there. Just all you need to do is get get the flat screwdriver to the outside edge of that hole at the back of the steering wheel. You'll feel with the tip of your screwdriver you'll feel the, the metal uh, clip and then you just pry downward until the airbag pops out. Now I can you'll see here at the front that there's a good gap around my airbag. That means my airbag's free. I'm not gonna pull at it until I disconnect my uh, my battery so we're going back to the boot again under the left side cover we've got our battery I'll just turn the car off quickly grab your 10 millimeter 
find your negative terminal. My negative terminal is on this corner. Just gonna loosen that up. So the point of this is to prevent my um, ECU from registering an airbag error. I've got that negative lead going out. Uh, and that's now disconnected. So we'll quickly move on. The tools we need is a strong bar and we need the M12. We may need an extension and I'll leave them back here for now. So we've got the airbag free, just like that. At the bottom here, just on the inside, you'll notice the yellow plug, that's your airbag plug. Yeah, so we're going to lift up the white connector here, uh, the white um, tab here, and pull the connector out. Be careful, we've got another one here at the bottom. Just here, a little black tab, press that down, press that down and pull this, pull the plug out. We've now got our airbag uh, removed, and before I proceed, um, I'm going to, let me just get my assistant to grab the other steering wheel, I want to quickly show you. Um, how that airbag clips in so you know at this point what it is you're doing so just for the purpose of demonstration I'm gonna put put the airbag into the new steering wheel So that's all the way in, clicked in. If you have a look here, you'll see that there's a metal clip. And that's the part of the airbag. Let me grab my flat screwdriver. So this is the part of the airbag. This is what holds the airbag on. On this corner. And another one on this corner. Some of the Japanese cars and early European cars had the airbag bolted in. But this is the method used for these cars. So this is what we're really doing. Once we get the, st the steering wheel into the position we want, all we're doing is we're getting our screwdriver into the outer edge and pushing the clip out and it's very very lightly getting the airbag giving it a little bit of pressure there on the edge of the airbag to get that clip free same on the other side we move it apart very gently put some pressure on the airbag and get that free it will take you a few tries. The first time I did it was a painful exercise uh, in a car wrecking yard. It wasn't easy, but we got it done. I just set those aside very carefully. We don't want to damage the airbag. Um, my steering wheel is locked, which is good. I'll get that M12 in here. You see that that's footed snuggling in. Um, put my strong bar on there. I'm gonna hold on. I don't want my steering lock to take the pressure, but you can see that was pretty easy to free up. Again, my battery is disconnected. Um, unlike some of the older cars, I noticed that with these you don't really need to do much to get um, to get the steering wheel off. You probably won't need a puller. But I want you to take careful note of the markings around here. Those markings. You want to put the steering wheel back in at the same orientation that it's at now. For the simple reason that as long as you get it in there, your steering wheel will remain in position as straight as straight as it is now so 
there so I've noted where the steering wheel is we want to keep the new position in at exactly the same part as the old now that we've noted the position we'll just very gently rock the steering wheel back and forth and you'll see that it's popped out incredibly easily um, before we put the new one in we obviously need to retrofit um, the steering wheel buttons and whatever else we want to shift across so I'll just grab both of them we want to take apart uh, everything on the old steering wheel uh, this one might seem tricky at first let's get started by taking off uh, the two Torx bolts on either side take care not to damage any of the wiring or plastic panels left side just undo them slowly it's not it's not a difficult job but you just don't want to cause any damage getting parts in the in innermost part of the steering wheel it's not going to be easy just keep those bolts safely now we'll move these Move these out of position. And you'll notice that this wire from the pedal shift comes in down and pull it out. Sorry about that. The same on this side. Press it down, pull it out. So those are now free. Pull these ribbons out carefully. Now this section at the bottom it gets it looks a little bit confusing as to how it's mounted but if you gently move the rubber bits of the steering wheel aside that piece will almost just lift out there you go so there's two tabs one on either side held into the rubber part at the bottom of the steering wheel all it is is to remove that so I'll remove those set them aside just gonna take a quick look around the steering wheel um, at first glance it looks like the pedal shift buttons are in better condition on uh, on the older steering wheel probably used less uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm not sure how this is gonna work out but I'll very quickly try to take the pedal shift buttons off as well I've not done that before but for the purpose of this video we could have a quick look doing the right side let's make sure the left side actually works uh, keep that screw set it's different from the earlier one and it looks like that pedal shift button just slides right out be careful around the plug squeeze it through the rubber there and bring it out so you'll see that there's some white little bits of scrapes on the edges I've got better ones so I'm just gonna change them all out uh, same tool T20 let's open up the right side again you'll notice that this screwdriver has a countersunk sorry this, this screw has a countersunk uh, head it's different from the other ones we'll just keep those keep those aside we don't want to mix them up we'll probably do some sort of damage if we do um, and again we want to pry the switch out very gently very very gently just out of there get the plug through we don't want to damage it we're probably I'm probably not going to use this button switch uh, again but um, I might need a few a spare part in the future um, I found it's easier to get out if the, the clip faces upward. I'm not sure if that makes any difference. So we've now got we've now got a totally bare Mark V GTI steering wheel. Uh, if you've made it this far, good on you. Uh, we're now going to take apart the original steering wheel, transfer everything that we need into the replacement. So once again. Starting off with the T20, we'll free up the 
screws on the switch panels or button panels I'm not sure what the technical term is I'll have a look as well for you if there's any part numbers on here so that if you want to retrofit uh, these into your steering wheel you could potentially buy them off VW uh, separately the button panel screws off very gently get those out of the way and same you'll notice that they tuck in underneath uh, the edge here just want to pull them out safely um, do the same thing plastic clip here press it down pull it out undo these very gently same thing here unclip all the ribbons out slowly those are free move this apart expose the tab at the bottom there there you go that's now free part numbers um, there's part numbers on most of it don't see part numbers on the buttons here These ribbons do have part numbers. Uh, 1K09595385F 9, on the right side. 1K09595537J on the left side. Um, this panel, uh, this part of the middle, has a part number. 1P09595542. That's for this box of the middle here. Um, as for these on the edges, yeah, they don't have any part numbers on them. These um, these buttons, they've got TRW stamped into them, but, but no real identifying marks. I'll just set those aside for now. Let's again get my T20, and I want to pull off my pedal switch, sorry, my pedal flap. Um, Flappy pedals, just loosen these up. These are the countersunk ones. You can see that the steering wheel has got uh, these cutouts here indicating that the countersunk ones go in there. Um, very, very gently, again, get these out. So on the inner part of the steering wheel, there's only just screws holding these in, four screws holding it all in. There's nothing else except for this rubbery stuff that seems to be the way the uh, tabs are being held in. Pretty much just compressed. I'm trying not to damage these stickers just in case I need them in the future. The numbers. So, here we are, original steering wheel, um, totally bare. So I'm, I'm not going to uh, video uh, myself putting the original components of the GTI steering wheel onto this, um, but I am going to video myself reassembling um, the flappy pedals uh, and all the multifunction components that were originally on this car into this replacement Golf Mark V GTI steering wheel. Uh, if you're interested, the part number for this steering wheel is 1K04190911 BF. Um, yeah, I've come across the come across a few of these. Um, this one's not the cleanest, but um, it's definitely a good one. For now better than the original i'm quite happy with it and i'll keep it in there for a while so uh, plus on the left uh, minus on the on uh, sorry plus on the right minus on the left um we'll just try to get this in it looks like it goes pretty much straight in like that nothing very much to it pull the wire through and i'll just leave that there screw them both in at the same time and again on the left side 
just cut that tape, tape through push it through the hole right there and in there here we are starting to look like a steering wheel again um, get these remember that we're getting the countersunk uh, screws into the outer holes here and we just want to screw them in gently don't want to over tighten these they're holding onto plastic on the end um, the steering was probably over 10 years old so I don't want to uh, break any plastic that may already be brittle just very gently snug that down and I'm happy with that test these buttons they do click like they're supposed to uh, and now for the more complicated one sorry we cut off a little bit we ran out of space on the camera so what, what we need to do now is once these both these panels are uh, screwed in by hand uh, we'll go ahead and snug them down uh, with our tool we don't want to make it too tight so try not to put the full force against it uh, just tiny screws in a plastic housing don't want to damage anything once you've done that, we've already done it, done your preferably plastic dry tool, something thin, something like a credit card, all the way through here, one end to the other. Do not stab the ribbon cable, you will run into trouble. You want to just want to, my sharp point is all the way in, so I know I'm not doing any damage. If you're not sure, use a credit card instead. Once it's all the way in, we're now going to reverse the process by refitting this into the car. On. We want to put this back in exactly the same position so that we don't damage the clock spring. So that's exactly where it used to be. And I'm quite happy with that. Um, something to note about uh, the bolt that holds this in. Um, I've read on one manual that this bolt should not be used more than five times. And each time you use it, to make an impression in there uh, or to keep a note of it somewhere so I, I'm keeping a note of it uh, in my manual and uh, that's how I manage it you could use a punch or something to make an indentation on there for each count um, or if you're feeling unsafe go ahead and buy a new one uh, it can't be more than a few dollars um, you want to tighten that up uh, in this respect, I've heard so many different things. The most popular is to snug it down as tightly as possible. Um, in one manual, I've read to tighten it down to 45 Newton meters and then 180 degrees. I've done this lots of times. Uh, I'm quite confident that I'll know how to tighten this and I'm going to do that. But I suggest that if you haven't done this before and if you don't know how to tighten down a steering wheel, uh, to get out your torque wrench and to tighten this down to 45 Newton meters plus 180 degrees preferably with a new bolt So this is turning freely without much much uh, force on it So I'm quite confident that I'm getting it right there So I've got this tightened down as tight as I feel is safe uh, And now I'm gonna go ahead and replace uh, the airbag uh, starting off with the back black plug just get that clicked in here at the bottom uh, the yellow one with the white clip facing upward I'm gonna get that in clicks in place um, I'll be careful to keep these cables away from the sides we don't want them to get um, snagged by these uh, clips here keep them near the center and with my full force push the airbag down I can see that it's springy on this side it's clipped in formally springy on the right side clipped in formally uh, steering wheels nice and tight uh, and I now want to go go down here uh, and I want to get this cover back into its place so just to remember we've got the semicircular clip at the back got that in there front ones clipped in nicely and the same on the right side Get all the clips into their places you can see that this trim is in firmly 
all the way through there and if we come around the left side it's in firmly all the way through there it has not been screwed in from the bottom yet and I'll go ahead and do that once again grab the T20 just remember again there's just one hole at the bottom slowly guide that in remember again it's plastic you definitely don't want to over tighten and break anything that's snug don't want to tighten it further than that I'm confident that it's tight enough it's all in nice and firm here nice and firm We've got uh, we've got a few lights on. Um, these are usually illuminated for whenever the battery is disconnected. We've got a little steering wheel symbol on the left side there, and we've got a traction control symbol on the right side. Um, from my experience, after driving for a very short while. Uh, those will switch off um, probably a few meters and they will turn off um, I'm gonna take it out for a quick drive and then show you that uh, all is well right we're back I pretty much drove the car three meters forward <laughs> and three meters back um, and ev everything is just cleared up all is well I have tested uh, all of the buttons uh, I'm just gonna engage my parking brake here and switch uh, I'll leave the car running I want to get off so I can show you uh, the steering wheel how it looks and how it works so here we are looks a lot better than the old one up and down keys working fine and on the other side just get that radio on and, and you may need to drive further got my volume keys working fine mute is fine and I don't have a uh, telephone so yeah everything works as expected and looks great thank you very much for watching please uh, like share and subscribe and um, yeah look out for my next uh, video on the Passat where I will be looking at uh, changing the gear shifter to one with a from I'm going to move away from the side button to a forward button uh, that's going to be an interesting one so keep an eye out thanks again for watching goodbye